Canada's housing market is defying predictions of a bubble and showing new signs of strength. Sales were way up in May, and the average price of a home rose by 7.1% over last year. Mike Drolet tells us which cities are the hottest and whether the surging prices are here to stay. There's nothing more emblematic of Toronto's housing market than this semi-detached Victorian. It sold for $1.25 million, a quarter of a million over asking. Now, it was listed low to create a bidding war, but it's a house. And in Toronto, where there's little place to build, they're in short supply. So every house today generally has, uh, you know, between 5 and 15 people bidding for the house. And uh, that's not going to change because we're not going to be adding any new houses going forward. Those numbers play into stats just released by the Canadian Real Estate Association. Nationally, the number of homes sold in May was 5.9% higher than April, the largest month-over-month -month increase in nearly four years. But hold on, even Korea is calling it an aberration, due in large part to the weather. People came back into the market in May after a brutal winter, and that's what gave it such a large pop. Still, the pop is there, and demand, at least in Canada's largest cities, is far outpacing supply. It's why real estate agent Brad Lamb has multiple condo projects on the go. You know, you have a choice now. You can buy a new house two hours from the city, or you can buy a condo in the city. That's your choice, unless you're rich. He's not wrong. Three cities continue to surge. Prices in Calgary shot up a remarkable 10% in the last year. And the already inflated markets in Toronto and Vancouver also saw big jumps in prices by 7.1% and 4.3%. The key is that if you look below the surface, a good half the country is not seeing home prices rise at all. So if you look anywhere from Quebec east, house prices are flat to down. A lot of parts of, of, of the prairies are pretty, pretty flat as well too. So it's the big cities driving the market. Remarkably, Korea is forecasting only small gains on average next year. No doubt the country's hottest markets will be immune. Mike Trolley, Global News, Toronto.